Welcome to Ninon Speaks. I'm your host, Ninon de Verde Rosa, and my co-host is AJ Dean. Sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome to Ninon Speaks. I'm Ninon de Verde Rosa, your host, and next to me is AJ, my co-host. Absolutely amazing. We have two incredible guests, but as you very well know, I never introduce them. AJ introduces them. So, so we find out who they are, what they do, and everything about them. I understand they're absolutely incredible. I just want to reach out to everybody out there for supporting uh, Neon Speaks and both of us. Absolutely incredible. We're doing very, very well. We're a new show, so we're very excited about it. And uh, we're doing extremely well, aren't we, AJ? Absolutely. And I'm so excited. I'm going to admit our guests now. Absolutely. And I am thrilled. Tonight, we have the Queen of Blues, Lady Brandy of Lady Brandy's Place in Las Vegas, Nevada. Every Saturday night, she's there from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. for the best rhythm and blues music in town. And we have a lot of fun things to talk about with her. She also performed at the historic Moulin Rouge. We want to talk a lot about that. Yeah. And it is my also my great pleasure to introduce Mr. Tony Taylor. He is an amazing film and television actor, producer, and screenwriter. And he's been in films like 2021's Forget About It, Tony's Place, he, which he screen wrote, and, the Di and Diablos de Denver. So we're going to talk to him. He's got some exciting film projects. Welcome guests. Hello, Tony. Hello, Thank Lady you. Brandy. Hi. Hi, how are you? How are you both? You're both looking amazing. You know, Lady Brandy, I understand we're going to pay you a visit um, actually in June. Yes. Happens to be, I think it's going to be a birthday thing or something. I'm, I'm, I'm 39 and holding. <laughs> you look older than me, then. <laughs> 29 and holding, right? It's 22. Oh, 22 and holding. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> how, are you, how are you doing, uh, Lady Brandy? How's everything? Fine, uh, thank you. Because the um, this 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 COVID nine nineteen has been crazy for all of us, and um, we've all been hanging in there. We have been able to continue our show. We haven't stopped it because we're on Zoom. So we sort of you know we keep marching along. So we found a way before all this actually happened. So we're pretty cool. So how's it going with you, Lady Brandy? Everything is fine. First of all, I want to thank you guys for bringing me on. Yeah, that, that is fantastic to meet both of you. And uh, I want to thank you for inviting me on your wonderful show. Well, absolutely. You, you know, uh, if anybody doesn't know what we do, uh, Nino Speaks is a platform where we give entertainers, mostly entertainers. We also do writers and, and also anybody who's inventing whatever they're inventing. So it's actually a, a, a platform for everybody. But because we're in Vegas and because we know a lot of the entertainment business people, we like to give them that platform just to let people know that uh, the things are happening, things are still going on. And once you're in the entertainment business, you don't give up. You keep plodding along. Is that right, Tony? Tony that is correct. How are you that doing? That is correct. I'm good, Nina. And how are you? I'm absolutely amazing. Now, you live in Vegas, don't you? Yes, and it's really good to see you again. Yeah, I've seen, I saw, you were on my show, weren't you? I was once. I was. Some time ago. Some time yeah. ago. Yeah. How's it going for you um, with all this craziness going on? Um, you know, it, it, the, the virus definitely hurt the entertainment business and film, um, especially when you're a union actor. Um, SAG actually put a lot of restrictions this year on filming. Really? So, yes, a lot. Um, so as a production crew, like producers and everybody like that, they have to actually have a, at least another 30% into their budget, added to their budget, just for COVID um, precautions. You have to be tested. You have to have a doctor. You have to have so many things now just because of COVID. So it, it's, it really hurt the entertainment business a little bit, but everything's starting to fire back up. A lot of my friends are making films right now. I'm actually getting ready to go out east for another film um, that they just started production on last week. So I'm just waiting on my call sheet for that. So I'm actually really excited. So everything's getting back to normal. Can we talk? Um, about, can we? Can you mention the name of it? Or you, or, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, the movie's called Raw Power. Um, it's based on a true story. It's about a five-time world champion power lifter. His name is Diesel Ramos. He's a he's a huge man, huge. I just seen him the other day on a video. He was bench pressing 1,200 pounds. It's like really. 
but it's about that. And I play, uh, I play the president of the weightlifting association in that movie. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's a different role for me. Cause as you know, I usually play mafia, mafia, mafia. So I'm actually got a couple roles this year. That's not mafia. So it's like, wow. <laughs> so. You're reaching out. I know it's funny when you get typed in, in casting. Um, yes. A lot of them actors get typed into what they do. And sometimes they're afraid to actually move left or right in case they miss a part. But sometimes you've got to do that. You've got to sort of let people know that you're, you know, you can play other parts. And that's why you're an actor. Because Yes, yes. And I just got done doing a film out in New York. Yeah. Um, it was called The Vagrant. It's going to be a Netflix movie. But um, I actually played a Catholic priest in that one. So a total role change. <laughs> so. How did you like playing a priest? Um, I liked it. It was a it was a drama movie. You know, it was a total drama movie. Um, and it it was it was challenging for me because I actually had to cry and stuff like that. But it was easy because I worked with an actor. His name is Tony Farrow, and he's he's been in a in a movie business for a long time and. He had to cry a lot, too, because I was his friend in the movie. And so I just fed off of him, you know, and when he started crying, it made me sad. So I started crying and it was it worked out good. <laughs> so. Was it easy for you to, to play a priest? Um, do you know the Catholic religion or did you just? I am. I am Catholic. I was I, I used to go to a church in Denver where I'm from uh, every every Sunday. You know, I was I never missed mass. But um, it was challenging. I, you know, what I did to prepare for that movie is I watched a lot of YouTube videos because um, I had to do a eulogy and I had to do other. The other scenes were easy, but the eulogy was actually pretty difficult for me. You know, I had like 500 words I had to read and and but I actually didn't read it. I, I had to memorize it, but I walked around and talked about the folks that died and stuff like that. And it was it was actually pretty challenging. But, I, you know, the director was really happy with my performance and so I got a thumbs up on that one. Sounds like it was a pretty moving um, character you played because it's yeah. not easy to play a priest because you have to do it probably right exactly how they are otherwise they're gonna, yes. you know I was going to have a problem with oh he didn't say the right thing about priests. <laughs> <laughs> right no it was it was challenging but it's it's, it's going to be released this year so mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see it. Um, there was a lot of great talent that was attached to that film and it's going to be good. It's going to make all you guys cry. Uh, oh, I, I can't wait. It. Let's go back to you, Lady Brandy. Now, Lady Brandy, I understand you have had quite a career. Oh, yeah. Share a little bit about, you know, you, you can brag. Don't be afraid to brag who you've been with and who you perform with. And, you know, you're one of the greatest, apparently. I mean, I haven't heard you. You're one of the greatest jazz. Blues. Blues, excuse me. Yes, she has, um, Lady Brandy is, is wonderful. She has a uh, Party Like a Boss. That's one of my favorite songs. And the other one, Shake It Off. And you have worked at Moulin Rouge. Can you tell us stories about that, Lady Brandy? It's such an honor for you to be here. Yes, uh, working with, working with uh, at the Moulin Rouge with one of the most beautiful ladies in, in Las Vegas that I have ever met on the Moulin Rouge. And it was it was it was really a, a pleasure to work with her and for her. She was a lot of fun too. Sarah and Ann Knight Preddy, is that correct? That's that's it. I love I love her and she loved me. What and, did she, um, what did she bring to to what you didn't know and, and what you sort of learned from her? Because I know we all learn from other people, but she was such an icon. What did you learn from her? Actually, uh, learning from and working with her, I learned to uh, really invite people in, in, in into the, the entertainment world. Uh, I was doing that anyway, but she really put, the, uh, put that on me to invite other people in and entertainers in and let them perform also on, on platforms. Now, your platform, obviously, this is a club you have, right? Part, yes, it's a club called Lady Brandy's Place. Okay. And how long have you had this club? And it's in Vegas. Where about in Vegas is it? It's uh, 953 East Sahara inside the Commercial Center, B, Suite B31. And I've okay. been there four years now. Yeah, I know where you are. You're right behind the old Hilton Hotel, the Westgate. Yes. Yeah, right behind there. Yeah, I know where you are. Um, yes. How have you been managing through the COVID-19? Because you've had, been shut down and then you've opened with 25% and then you can build up to 50%, and now I don't know what rules they've got. I have no idea. 
Yeah, right now it's uh, at 50%. And uh, we this has been be my fourth show since uh, we have shut down. But at that time, I was remodeling the club. So that gave me something to do there. So when it, it just everybody that comes in now, this is my fourth show. They love the uh, remodeling that we did. It's beautiful. You actually utilize your time. And you didn't really have any downtime because you used your downtime, exactly. which is a beautiful thing to do. Exactly. So I have to ask, I'm sorry to interrupt. I have to ask this, Ninon. Um, the Moulin Rouge is a, such a historical hotel and casino. Lady Brandy, did you work with Sammy Davis Jr. or Dean Martin or, Frank, or um, the chairman of the board, Frank Sinatra? I know that they frequented yeah. the Moulin Rouge. Can you, can you share with us a little bit about that? Who did you perform with? Well, I didn't get a chance to perform with them. Uh, actually, I performed with some blues singers over there, like uh, Millie Jackson, Denise Assel, and uh, some co comedians. I can't think of his name, of, but some comedians, uh, professional comedians uh, that I performed with over there. But uh, in the entertainment, singing, Denise Assel and Millie Jackson over at the Moulin Rouge. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Now, do you get other people to come into your club um, to, to perform as well? Yes, I do old, uh, old school r and I got a lot of Las Vegas entertainers, Drake King, Wiz and Phoenix, uh, Michael Welch, um, Well, uh, E.C. Adams. So it's a whole lot of uh, entertainers that come in and open up for me and we just do a great job. Yeah, have you, um, let's go over to you, Tony. Tony, have you been to her club at all? And if you no, have- No, I haven't. <laughs> I really want to go though. I actually saw a couple of videos on YouTube of Lady Brandy, and I'm actually a fan of her. She's really very talented, and I'd really like to meet her in person one day and go to her club. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, go back to Lady Brandy. Lady Brandy, are you going to sing a little something for me? Uh, sing a little something for you? Something? I, I, it doesn't have to be. Oh, yeah, I'll do a something told me it was over. Then I saw you. And her talking something deep down in my soul. That's it. Beautiful. I love it. I Beautiful. love it. Thank you so much. It's so great. When you sing like that, I go immediately to New Orleans. Oh yeah. That's a, a, a song down by, called Rather Go Blind. Wow. Really? It's a, a song, Coco Taylor. I do Coco Taylor's version, but it's by uh, Etta James. Oh. Etta James, oh. yes. And yep. uh, Coco Taylor did it, and my voice is more so on the uh, Coco Taylor's version. And it's a uh, matter of fact, that's everybody's favorite song that I sing uh, at the club. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for that rendition. Lovely. I think that you've probably got a lot of favorite songs, Lady Brandy. And, and you know, I take my hat off to, to you on, on how you keep up the tradition, because sometimes the tradition loses its place, um, especially with the younger generation um, coming out with lots of different things now. I mean, I, I go through my life, I might be 39 and holding, but <clears throat> I have, <laughs> yeah, I have been through different eras of sort of, you know, what, what goes on in the music industry. But for what you do, it seems to stay there, but there's people like you that keep it there. Um, how have you managed to do that? Is it just the, the tenacity of what you do with your club? Yes, it is. Um, music is my life. You know, okay. I feel for music and I've been doing it for over 40 years. I started off in Detroit and uh, I actually actually performed with Al Green also, which is my father, my oldest son's father. So uh, that's where I started at. And uh, in Detroit, son is Al Green's father. My oldest son, Al Green, is his father. That wow. is, yeah. Goodness gracious! Now, has he gone into the business? Is he singing or doing anything? My son, he's a writer, producer, and a rapper, actually. Rafa, how amazing. And he live, does he live in Vegas? Yes, he does. We got him on the show. Yep. Yes, yep. absolutely. Yep. We have him. And uh, also my, my uh, baby son, he's an actor. 
uh, uh, dancer. He uh, imitates Michael Jackson. So he's an actor, dancer, singer. And he's been in quite a few movies. He was on the Disney Channel, even Stevens. He was on the Apollo with uh, Steve Harvey. He has his movie out called uh, Lo Love Triangle. He's been on The Shield. So he's done a lot of things also in acting and dancing. That's amazing, isn't it? What do you think of all this, Tony? It's amazing. Oh, it's impressive. Is She's it? very talented, and it sounds like her sons are very talented, too. I hope to meet these gentlemen one day. Oh, yeah. oh Especially in the acting business, because yeah. you, you can all help each other with the people you know, the people they know. And this is the whole idea of actually what we do is that you two could sort of get together or you go to her club and meet up with her and you can help each other and, you know, bring people there. And, you know, that's how it kind of works. Yeah. Yes, because um, Tony has extensive background. He went to the uh, film uh, college in Denver, Colorado. Isn't that right, I, Tony? I did, yeah, the Colorado Film Institute in Aurora, Colorado, I did, yep. Have you always done acting? And, and if you have, a um, few little places or, or names you like to bring up. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've been in acting for 10, 12 years now. Um, and I've, I'm finally starting to get to a place the last couple of years where I'm getting some really good parts, really big roles and some really bigger movies, you know, which is good, which is actually going to be in theaters and Netflix and places like that. So I'm actually very blessed for that. Um, but gosh, I've worked with some really great people. I mean, this summer I get to work with Tom Sizemore. You know, he's we're going to do a movie down in um, Houston called Old Man Jackson. It's a comedy movie. And me and Tom Sizemore is going to be the gangsters in the movie. Um, but I mean, Robert Lasardo, Danny Baldwin, I know, I mean, I've met these people so, and had a chance to, you know, learn from them as well, because they're all really seasoned actors. And that's, that's one thing I, I've learned about some of the veteran actors is, is a lot of them are really helpful. You know, they will help you with your craft and, and give you pointers and stuff like that, because you can go to school all you want, but when you're actually learning the tricks of the trade from the guys that's been down a long road, it's, it's an honor, you know? So I'm always happy to help people if, if I can in any way, you know, I'm always about that. Well, that's what actually why people like you and you get on because I, I was an actress at one time and doing different things across the board and you have to be like, and you have to turn up for the job. You have to know your lines and you have to know all this. Right. But you're so right when you can learn it on stage or you can learn it, you know, like like Lady Brandy. I'm quite sure you learned a lot from your peers. And I'm quite sure, Tony, you're, you learn a lot from, from all the actors. And that's actually where you can actually, in, you can still be your own person, but you can learn from them of, of how to be and how to act and how to sort of, you know, conduct yourself. It's a business. People don't think it is, but it's a business. It is. It's, Tony? Yeah, it's a, it's a big business. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of money in, in movies, a lot of money tied up in that. So when you show up on set, you better have your A-game ready because they don't like you to waste their money, you know, on, on set. And you can always be replaced. That's the <laughs> Always, always. Fortunate part. Right, lady? Lady, Brown, you can always be replaced, right? Sure, that's for sure. Yeah. Now, you ha how many children do you have? Lady uh, you have five children. I know you have uh, three boys. You have three boys and two girls. What are the girls doing? Pardon? What are the girls doing? Are they uh, are they they're makeup artists, hairdressers? Uh, that's what they do. So they've gone into the business, but they're behind the scenes, not in front of the behind scenes. The scenes. Take, yeah. Sit and take mama's voice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and <to> neither. Because <laughs> I'm also a dancer. Uh, uh, matter of fact, I started on modeling. I, uh, my, uh, I was an instructor for Barbara's Island School of Modeling for years. And then I got off into the, the singing, uh, the blues, and, you know, when I met Al Green, actually. So, did, you, did you not think you had a singing voice or did you know you had a singing voice, but you didn't like, kind of sort of bring it out there? I didn't think so. My sister was the one that got me into singing. She was a singer. And uh, she made me get down in that basement and start singing. So after that, I started singing. And when I got to Vegas, I met a few people, Bobby Jones and um, quite a few people in the blues industry. So then they, they wouldn't let me go. So and I'm glad they didn't. 
Tell us, it's a good job. <laughs> they, they didn't. So, and I love singing music. Like I say, uh, music, being in the music industry is really, I live for music. I, I sleep singing, to tell you the truth. Sleep listening to music because uh, it just really uh, helps me, helps me help, help my day go by. Do you write your own, some of your own music? I've never, I've written one song in my life, but no, I haven't written any of my own music. Why don't you do that? Why wouldn't you? Because you're so accomplished and you've known so many people and you've done so well. Why haven't you edged out on that? You put a little like, you can't do it? Because I, I know you can. It's not that I can't do it. It's just that uh, I never thought about doing it. It's a lot of people that want to write for me. So when they start writing, I just sit back and <laughs> let them do the work <laughs> and, and enjoy, you know. But I, I, I am thinking about uh, a song. Uh, I lost my sister New Year's Eve. I mean, New Year's Day, actually. And uh, mm -hmm. she was she sang, and I was going to do something, write something for her. And and then you can present it to her on New Year's. Yeah. Wouldn't it be beautiful? Give yeah. it a surprise for, well, I don't know if it's going to be a surprise <laughs> now. <laughs> no. <laughs> the the of great memories of, of my baby sister because uh, we did a lot of things together. She also performed at the Rouge with me. So uh, it would be in memory of her. Absolutely, or absolutely fantastic. Maybe um, AJ, maybe we can get her on the show as well. Can we get on oh, the show? That would be great. Would, would you let your sister come on since you've been on? <laughs> Not that sister. <laughs> oh, okay. That sister, she's deceased. that's the one that I lost. Oh, deceased. Yeah, she, I I'm lost. So sorry. Day. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, one, one you lost. Yeah, she but my two sons, um, yeah, they anxious to try to get on here too. Absolutely, uh, Tony. What got you um, into the movie industry? Because you've only been doing it for twelve years. Obviously, you didn't um, start at sixteen. It's actually kind of a funny story, Ninon. Um, in Denver, I used to belong to an uh, organization kind of like the Elks Club, but it was called the Italians of America. And what it was was a nonprofit group that raised money for charity and stuff like that. And the president of the association, his name was Tom Lingrani. Mm -hmm. And he had a friend from Hollywood that was the director, and they were making a movie in Denver. And he's like, Tony, I think you should really try and get in this movie. I was like, I don't want to be an actor. You know what? what am... And he's like, no, really, just try. So he got me an audition set up. I went down to the studio that they had in Denver. And I walked in. There was a bunch of bright lights. There was white curtains everywhere. I remember it like it was yesterday. And so I sat on a, like a bar stool, all these lights in my face. The director's like, did you bring your monologue? And I was like, what's a monologue? And he's like, what? <laughs> and so he handed me a monologue. I read it. He's like, you're not an actor, are you? And I was like, no, I'm not. And he got so mad. He's like, you wasted my time. Get out of here. You're never going to be an actor. And that, that kind of upset me. I, I spooed on it for a few days. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to show this guy. So I actually enrolled in the Colorado Film School and, and, you know, learned acting stuff. I, I learned how to dance. I learned how to sing. I learned behind the cameras. I learned a little bit in front of the cameras. And, and I, after I got graduated from there, I got a couple of short films I did right away just to say I can do what I want to do, you know, and then I did a theatrical play for like six weeks and I'll never do that again, ever, ever, ever. But um, that's the real talent guys right there. But that's why. And then I, I actually enjoyed it. And so I just kept on and kept on and kept on until, you know, I had a couple smaller agents back then. And then I finally got to a point where I'm at today. I got a really good agent in LA. I got a good uh, manager in LA, you know, so I'm, I mean, things are good for me. I can't complain, but I enjoy it. I really love it. There was persuasion on your side and, and you suddenly realized that there was something within you that you could do that you didn't realize that you could do all because of your friend. That, yeah, that really, it's true. Yes, um, he was the one that really got you out there, which was amazing. What about this Netflix thing? Now, Netflix and all these other arenas um, are out there. Has this helped the industry? <coughs> um, during the uh, pandemic, it really has helped the industry, you know, because now Netflix is actually, I don't know if you've watched Netflix for a while, but they're actually getting movies from all over the world that other countries are producing and they're putting it on Netflix. But 
a lot of the bigger movies that would be going to theater right now, they're still coming to Netflix. So Netflix is really, really growing a lot right now. Um, I'm hoping one day that everything gets back to normal. We can all go back to the theater and watch movies and eat popcorn and, and enjoy it just like the old days, you know. Um, but Netflix has definitely taken over on the film side of it. Certainly. And it's wonderful. It is wonderful. AJ, what would you like to ask? Yes, I wanted to ask Tony first. I've got a, a couple questions for uh, both Lady Brandy and Tony. Um, how was it to work in the, on the movie Forget About It in 2021? So can you talk a little bit about that? And then also you wrote for Tony's Place, which is really, really cool. Can we hear about that as well, Tony? You bet. Um, Tony's Place was filmed probably six, seven years ago. Um, and I used to work at a radio station and I was a, I had a show, I was a host of a show. And then the uh, program director, he's like, let's come up with something really cool. So I actually came up with the idea um, of Tony's place. And it was, had like 20 different characters and I'd bring them into the radio station every week and I'd record their lines and I built the show. And it was so popular on the internet that I had an idea one day, let's turn this into a movie. So I wrote the script for it. Um, I found a production company. They started turning it into the film. They changed the script a little bit, but um, it actually was a pretty funny movie. Um, it was based in the 1940s, and it was about a small town in Nevada that root beer was illegal, and it was like prohibition, but it was root beer, and it was it was pretty it was pretty funny. Um, I love root beer. That sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> and then forget about it. 2021. How was that? um that movie is still not quite finished yet that is a bigger movie it's actually a 16 million dollar budget movie and that's that movie's still in progress right now um but it, it's there's a lot of because tony's place was a thirty thousand dollar budget movie okay now forget about it it's a, like i said 16 million dollars and these other movies that i've been working on their their budgets are really a lot higher too so there's a lot more puzzles and a lot more people involved in these movies so it's it's just like wow okay let's just that's, wait and do it it's <laughs> yeah that's right i think i think that's amazing um ninon i also wanted to ask lady brandy um who did she um when she worked at i'm sorry when she performed at the moulin rouge um what kind of songs and performances did she do and what did she enjoy what her are her great memories of that time because it's such an important time Yes, it was. Uh, my, I had a couple of things. Like I said, a lot of people had got their favorite songs, you know what I'm saying? Which make me feel really good. Um, they like me to do that, you know, the bluesy blues, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I can do that. Uh, Don't Jump My Pony. Rather Go Blind. Hey, Mr. Sexy Man. <laughs> Quite a few. And working at the Rouge with... Uh, Sarah Ann, uh, Sarah Ann favorite song, like everybody else was, uh, I'd Rather Go Blind. And uh, that's what made me carry that to where I'm at now, because back then Miss Sarah Ann liked that song and uh, she meant a lot to me. She was a very special person to me and working at the Rouge and meeting the people that I've met. Gladys Knight, I met her over there. Uh, uh, who else? Uh, I would say Patti LaBelle, just meeting them. Uh, uh, free to pain. So I met uh, quite a few people through Sarah Ann, uh, worked the OJs, uh, uh, Gerald Austin of the Manhattans, Bobby Blue Bland, BB uh, King, and uh, right now, BB uh, King's daughter, Rita King, she inducted me into the Las Vegas Blues Hall of Fame. Uh, so I was inducted into the Las, Blues, uh, Las Vegas Blues Hall of Fame. I also won uh, the People's Choice Award, the Dr. Martin Luther King Award, and I was inducted into the Black Music Hall of Fame. Uh, that was this year uh, in January. And so I took a lot from uh, the Moulin Rouge and made me want to open my own club. She gave me that. We talked about that and doing my own business, and she really uh, steered me in that direction that I am doing right now. So it's a great thing to, uh, to have worked at the Rouge. This is so beautiful. It's such a beautiful what you said about Sarah Ann 
night, Freddy. And um, she lives on. And I just want to mention that. And I love how you keep her energy and love and spirit growing. And that is what it's all about. Yes, it is. You're absolutely right, AJ. And I think it's both of you, um, Lady Brandy and Tony Taylor, both of you are, are, are going ahead. You're not letting anything get in your way. And you're continuing to, to move forward and, and to, to, you know, put where what you everybody else has learned through the years and you're continuing it. And I think that is one of the greatest things you can ever do. But Vegas is, is like this. This is what Vegas is. Vegas is a place where you keep moving forward and there is so much competition here. But, you know, obviously you are the competition, um, Lady Brandy. You're very, you know, I mean, everybody knows you. Look at the, look what you've achieved. What, when you look back, what is the greatest thing in your heart that you think you, that, that really made you excited and say, wow, I've got her? The greatest thing made me excited. From where you are now. Yeah, was that the way the people react to me, the way they, uh, they, they, I got a lot of fans and that makes me really feel good, you know? And even with uh, people like, uh, uh, like I said, Rita King, B.B. King's uh, daughter coming to ask me to, um, perform and do B.B. King songs. And, you know, this, it, it, it's just a lot. God has blessed me to do and work and meet with many people in my life. And uh, I, I, I'm appreciative for that. And which made me bring other people, other performers into doing what I'm doing, uh, bringing them into my club and, and welcoming them to my club. And we doing our thing. It, it's a great show because the people that I'm bringing in are great entertainers. Drake King, oh my God. Wisdom, they all are great entertainers. So we've been together for a while. I'm basically really the only one in Las Vegas that have the same band for almost 15 years. Oh my goodness. I've changed band members like that. Yeah. So you bring a lot of the younger generation into your club to, that really aren't out there and their name's not known and, and you give them a platform to actually sort of perform? Yes, I do. Uh, matter of fact, I have a, a, a record company, recording company that I'm opening up called GI's Genuine inner circle entertainment, which bringing in uh, my son, uh, D-Love Stacks, that's his rap name. Yeah. He's uh, doing the, uh, the studio and bringing in different uh, artists, younger artists. And uh, my son, Byron, he's gonna have an acting class that he teaches. And uh, I'm gonna have a modeling class as well as fashion show, fashion entertainment shows. So I do have a lot coming up uh, once uh, we get through this COVID thing. Uh, we do have a lot coming up, and I am very proud. And my husband, uh, MC Duke Mills, he sings on the show, and he's the MC of the show. Oh, how fabulous. So it's kind of keeping it very family. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. I think yeah. that's amazing. Um, Tony, let's go back to you, thinking of, about um, your acting, but not even acting, even whatever you were doing before. What can you think of which sort of really made you feel so good and so actually proud of yourself? Um. Probably when some casting directors called me up to be in their, to be in a film where I didn't even have to audition because most most actors you have to audition, you know, and, and lately I've been I've been getting casts where I didn't haven't even had to audition. So that's really a, a big honor for me too. It's like wow, that's kind of cool. You know, God. but like Lady Brandy said though, I mean God has really blessed me, you know, He's blessed me, He's blessed my family. I'm I'm I owe it all to him. I really do. You know, because I ask God all the time to lead me in the direction I should be in. And, you know, I, I let him take the reins and he points me in a direction. And sometimes I'm a little stubborn. So he gives me a kick from behind, but I eventually get there. But um, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just blessed where I'm at, you know, and I hope I hope I can keep on the same journey that I've, I've been on for a while. And I hope I get to meet a lot of the nice people like you and AJ and Lady Brandy, I really, really enjoy listening to you. You're so I'm now, a fan. I mean, I am a fan of you. So you I'm go. ready to come to your club. <laughs> uh, we're looking for you to come to the club. <laughs> ready, yeah. so. Descend upon you, Lady Brandy. Um, Tony, where can people reach you um, if they need you for any acting jobs or anything? How can you be reached? 
Um, I, I have face. I have actually two Facebook pages. I have a personal page in which I contacted you on AJ, and then I have an acting page. And then I also have Instagram, Tony Taylor forty four at Instagram. Um, I don't have Twitter. I don't ever really get on Twitter, but um, Facebook and and Instagram. Well, I think Twitter is just a place where you put a remark in. I, I don't think yeah. to find anybody, but they seem to find all the wrong things. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> A bit of an upheaval, but Twitter is Twitter. I love the name of it. It's great. Um, Lady Brandy, how can anybody reach you? And and you gave me the address of your club, which is on Sahara, but you go ahead. Uh, yes, like I said, it's 953 East Sahara, and it is called Lady Brandy's Place. And you can reach me at, uh, on Facebook, Lady Brandy's Place uh, website, my website, definitely, uh, which is uh, queenladybrandy.com. Okay. And, uh, or you can call area code 702-513-4592. There's a woman that doesn't mind giving her phone number out. <laughs> well, that's the business number. You know, you got to do the business thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Why well not? Um, do you have a phone number as well, Tony, or are you rather not? <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> that's okay. Well, they're going to call you. If they're going to call you on the phone, I don't give any business if I don't give out my business number. That's not my right. personal number or my cell number. They've that's, got the, that's Lady Brandy's place number. Because they're going to make reservations to come and see your show, right? That's what I'm saying. Yes, uh, and yeah. I can't wait. I'm so looking forward to it. I can't wait. I'm so thrilled. Well, uh, I want to thank everybody out there. We're coming to a close. I want to thank everybody out there for watching Vegas, uh, for watching all these uh, Vegas performers and and all these actors. It's absolutely incredible. And um, I want to thank AJ for putting a lot of this together. She actually kind of puts everything together. She is the um, producer. She's also the talent director. And then there's me. I just float around here. I don't know what I do, but I do something, whatever. But people reach like Tony, uh, you know, he sent me an email and then I passed it on and we put it around and, and that's how. So anybody out there that would like to be on Neon Speaks, please um, get in touch with us as Neon Speaks. We're all over the place. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on YouTube. We're everywhere. 